Well, thanks for the lo lovely introduction and um, to the previous speakers before, so inspiring. Um, I'm going to round up this session talking about social sustainability, um, which broadly speaking means means people. Um, but I think it, you know it means much more than that. It's about community and society. And just to give you a little bit of context, um, as Orlando said, I'm a structural engineer. My history is in relatively large and big kind of complex projects like uh, Wimbledon that you see in the upper left-hand corner. And I work for Thornton Tomasetti, who are known for some sort of large, you know, big urban developments and kind of innovative structures. And what was challenging to me about that as a sort of practicing designer was that they were all well and good from a, you know, um, technical engineering perspective. But I started to really be um, really concerned about the fact we weren't um, empowered to think about people as much as some of the other professions, such as the planners, architects, and clients. So about five years ago, I created for Thornton Tomasetti our first, first social impact initiative, and really looking at um, beyond philanthropy and volunteerism, what we can do in our everyday practice, um, not just to help people survive, but also to help communities and society thrive. And so that's the context that I'm, I'm coming to you from when I'm talking about social sustainability today and much more sort of practical, how can we all get involved um, perspective. So to start with, I thought I'd start with a definition about what is social sustainability. And um, you don't need to kind of process these necessarily, um, but take two things away from this. Um, similar to kind of environmental sustainability there are so many broad definitions and depending on where you're coming from um, where you sit within the built environment or outside it um, your perspective might be different but to me there's a couple of kind of overarching themes that I, i'd like you to perhaps consider as as we move away from this presentation today firstly social sustainability is about people and society and it's a balance with planet, so they're, they're not one or the other. We need to balance both and that it's inclusive and we need to think, it, think of it from a positive as well as a negative perspective. So what I mean by, you know, I'm an engineer, I like numbers. I thought it, I put a few on the screen. We're over 7 billion people in the world and we talk about the impact quite rightly, um, the negative impact that 7 billion people have on the world. But we also need to think about the impact that our industry has on people and our ability to um, help people, as I said, survive as well as thrive. And in doing that, we can give back to the planet as well. So it very much is this kind of balance of, of people and planet that we need to consider when we think about sustainability. It's much broader than our current, particularly in engineering, um, our current focus on just the climate emergency and the environment. Um, so most of you won't be surprised to kind of know that with climate change, um, as with many other things um, in the world, it's the poor and vulnerable that actually are the worst hit. And um, we're seeing that there's a lot of talk at the moment about energy prices and energy poverty. Um, we saw hurricanes in the US last week in the kind of devastation that's more and more frequent. Um, thinking about, you know, um, particular building safety and, and political and economic issues that are that are hitting all of us globally. And we know that actually um, it's our most underserved communities that are hit the worst. And so that can kind of be a little bit overwhelming, I think. And so I wanted to kind of impress upon everyone that we're really in a privileged position as engineers because whilst there is a lot of devastation caused by people and to, to our communities, we have an opportunity to really make a difference if we're mindful about what we do. And there's a lot of information to process on this, um, but this actually isn't one of my projects. It's um, It was a study by C40 looking at the multiple benefits of um, deep energy retrofits in existing buildings. But what I love about this is the measurement that they're, they're proposing can come out of these um, retrofits or we would say refurbishments in the UK, because I find that really uplifting that 
rather than just think of all the devastation that we can potentially um, contribute to in our in our work, we can actually have measurable positive impact in many different ways through our work as well. Um, so how do we do that? Just kind of moving into some of the approaches and frameworks, because one of my experiences in, in establishing a sort of social impact initiative is as engineers, we really want to get stuck into things that are tangible. Um, so here, I just want to highlight a couple of existing frameworks. And what what I what I want you to take from this is that there are so many different approaches, which means that we can all get involved in ways that suit either where we sit, whether we work on the design or construction side, perhaps we're clients, maybe we're in policy. Um, so to start off with. Um, UK structural engineers declare climate and biodiversity emergency. So it feels like that's very much, and it is focused on climate and biodiversity. But at the same time, if you look into it, it actually speaks to considering people and society and community as well, and thinking about things like regenerative design. Um, moving on to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, um, this aims to eradicate poverty and it's sort of bookended at one end by um, goal number one, which is no poverty globally, and 17, which is partnerships for goals. This one is one of my particular favorites because as an engineer, I find it like a series of guidelines and I can always find one or two extra goals that I think I can um, work within a design team context um, to bring more to a project just by using these design prompts and drawing on inspiration from other people and other projects around the world. Uh, another thing just to take from this and sort of my closing point when I get to it is one of the strengths in this one is partnership for goals. And that doesn't necessarily just need to mean uh, design team and client partnerships. Some of this, the sort of most impactful work I've done has been partnerships within our industry and with other structural engineers. So I really want to highlight that as one of the, one of the biggest contributors, I think, is for all of us to continue to share knowledge and work together. So we promised you donut economics. I think this is, again, driving home the point that balance is so important. Um, if we don't have a social foundation, then actually we can't serve society. But at the same time, if we don't consider the impact that we have um, as humanity on, um, on the environment, then nothing survives. So that balance and understanding the broad challenges and all of the different variables that go into um, considering that is really important. And, and I think really helpful when you start to get into how we can bring more to our projects and advance the conversation at an early stage. Again, moving through this, um, I really like Julia's point about net gain. And, um, Hand printing is something that, again, for me, I find a lot more uplifting. I can sometimes find it a little bit overwhelming when I'm designing predominantly concrete buildings and thinking we're really not moving fast enough in the right direction. And so I'm always searching for ways to bring more to projects. Um, hand printing looks at bringing in net positive impact rather than sort of doing less harm. Um, and it looks to do that in many ways beyond just the cradle to gate. So not just looking at the design process, but much broader perspective um, on the impact or potential impacts that we can have through our projects um, to the built and urban environment. Just a couple more, just to kind of give you a sense of just how many perspectives there are out there and how, how we can get involved in so many different ways. Um, on the left-hand side, you'll see regenerative, regenerative design. So going um, beyond what we would um, conventionally call sustainable design at this point, much more to restorative and systems that regenerate. Um, and the one planet living framework, which for me is sort of, um, once you dig into the UN SDGs, this is sort of um, similar, similar but more specific approach. Um, and Something that I just thought people might find interesting, this isn't an exhaustive list of certification, but actually when you dig into most existing certifications, um, all of them in some way 
focus of or or draw on measurement for people, community, and society as well. So while we might think of them as being driven um, prim primarily from an environmental or planetary perspective, um, we actually see that that balance of both is important. And and lastly, in this section, um, one of the things that early on I found was really challenging is is not feeling empowered by our clients. And, you know, this perception that maybe this is too expensive or it's not it's it's not why they exist. Um, but actually, we're seeing more and more momentum. Um, either driven by necessity, particularly for publicly listed companies, but also from a competitive advantage and branding perspective. We're seeing a lot more, um, particularly larger clients, um, uh, I guess put a lot of importance on both um, community as well as planet. Um, and so some of you may or may not heard of ESG. I just wanted to touch on this and particularly, as I said, for publicly listed companies, um, a lot of financial and, and real estate entities use um, ESG, which stands for environmental, social and, and governance, either measurement or reporting. And these are sort of three central factors that, um, that measure sustain, sustainability and social impacts of a company, an asset, perhaps a portfolio um, of buildings or a business. Um, and there's some regular regulatory frameworks around these as well. So just sort of wrapping up, how can we get involved? Well, one of the first things is that you're here, which is amazing. So creating awareness and educating ourselves and then thinking what we can do um, at an individual level as well as kind of a much more um, professional and industry level is really important. So here's a question that I was asked, and I hadn't really thought of it until perhaps a couple of years ago. Um, is your building ethically sourced and without forced labor as well as being sustainable? So I was very focused from the very beginning of um, collecting data for embodied carbon. And um, and this is, this is also gaining momentum. And I felt at the beginning of, um, I guess, being asked this question that I really wasn't empowered to understand some of these um, broader issues. Um, so this slide just gets us to start thinking about this when we're thinking about initial embodied carbon. Um, there's also a huge source of information on where your materials come from um, and the sort of hot spots as well in terms of particular materials and uh, particular countries where it might mean they're, might mean they're at high risk. So just something to start being aware of. Um, in fact, the Modern Slavery Act um, requires contractors and, and now more and more consultants, um, particularly working for contractors to ensure they haven't engaged in, engaged in modern slavery. Um, and on the right hand side, um, there's a, a toolkit to um, start drawing into to some of these specifics in terms of, as I said, materials where they come from and um, particular risks around them. Um, and then if we think about design, so we've thought about where the material comes from. In, in design, I love this quote, design is made for people. But just as Julia said, what can we do on an individual level? Um, I think it's really important to start with ourselves. What, we can, what can we do from a sort of personal commitment perspective? both personal and our impact um, as professionals and the privilege we have as professionals and the education we've had. So, so that might include things like um, ED&I, like how, how we treat other people in the office. For me as a kind of leader, how I set up an office um, and um, ensuring that, that it is inclusive, diverse and equitable. And then medium term for me, this is just to give you an example from my perspective, not to say I have it right, but that everyone can come at it from so many different levels. I look at the types of projects I choose, the types of clients I approach, the types of materials I use, anything I can impact from a design perspective. And then from a much wider perspective, I'm passionate about sharing my knowledge and creating community. And I'm certainly very engaged in the institution and um, lots of other industry um, movements around social sustainability. 
So just wrapping up, this is this is kind of looking at, you don't need to necessarily process my scroll on the left-hand side, but this is me starting to look at how I can get involved. The, the pyramid is Maslow's hierarchy of um, human or higher order needs. And my aim is to get involved through my work and through my personal commitment at each level where I can meaningfully have an impact. And some of these impacts are actually um, regulated as well. Um, and there's a lot of momentum around social values. There's a social value act. Um, but I, I find this slide the most easy to process in terms of what that really means from a sort of um, design perspective and a construction perspective. Historically, it's been focused on construction, but we're bringing it back into sort of design and planning. So it looks at additionality and it looks at what the net better benefit in quality of life for an identified group of stakeholders could be. Um, so really thinking about what we can all bring to a project. Um, this is the social out value act that I was mentioning. There's toolkits of, um, that provide great guidance around social value um, as well as the social value portal. And there's, there's loads of resources around this actually. So this isn't exhaustive again, just to kind of give you a quick intro into it. Um, and finally in construction, we think about safety um, quite often in our immediate term, but um, as well as physical safety, mental health, particularly in construction and in our industry in, in general is, um, is a huge concern. It's coming to the fore now, but it's something that we all need to kind of be aware of and, and supportive of. So what can we do? I think that the first thing, as I said, is to create an awareness and educate ourselves. But one of the things that I'm really passionate about is empowering the engineer. I think historically we've, um, we've been given a brief, we've been given a problem and we sort of sit in this space here of creating solutions and delivering them. Sometimes we're lucky enough to be able to help define the problem, but actually to be impactful, we really need to start a lot earlier. We need to you know, understand what we care about at a, a sort of a personal and professional level and educate ourselves so that we're informed and we can contribute and really get involved in those conversations. And finally, as I said, one of the most powerful things that I'm finding is community community within our industry to share and help all of us move forward together and accelerate um, is so important. So if you don't know where to start, um, you know, just turning up to this conference is an amazing start, but really just getting involved in community is so supportive in terms of enhancing knowledge and, um, and being able to do more. So with that, I'd like to um, thank you and um, look forward to some questions.